Now, one of the great things about the Laravel ecosystem is, of course, the tooling. If there's something you're trying to accomplish, there's probably a tool to help you out along the way. So to illustrate this, I want to show you Laravel Breeze and Laravel Socialite. We'll start from scratch, and in a matter of minutes, we will have a working application with GitHub sign-in. All right, let's get going. I'll say Laravel new, yeah, we'll call it Socialite. Okay, and I will warn you, we're gonna move a little quickly, but just come along for the ride. All right, next I'm gonna pull in Laravel Breeze, which if you're unfamiliar is authentication scaffolding. All right, now I will install Laravel Breeze, and this will add the necessary routing and registration pages and uh, things like that. Okay, next it wants us to install our dependencies. All right, let's open this in my editor, like so. And then let's also view this in the browser. All right, cool. So we see the familiar landing page, but now we have links to login and of course, register. But what I'd really like to do is offer a register or sign in with GitHub link at the bottom. Okay, let's find that register blade that was included with Laravel Breeze. And right down here, we can see this button to register. And if I click through, it is a button, but I really need an anchor tag here. So what I'm gonna do, and we could keep it all in the same component, but let's just create a new one instead. Button link.blade.php. And this will be an anchor tag, which means I can remove the type. Okay, cool. So now if we switch back to the register page, so now I can copy this and we have our button link and we'll say register with GitHub. Okay, let's have a look. I give it a refresh. Oh yeah, it's a little too much space. Um, of course I could increase the width, but let's just find something to make it a little prettier. Okay, so now think about it. When I click on this button here, I wanna redirect to GitHub. And if I have an account with GitHub and I authorize that this application we're building can access certain information of mine, that should be everything we need. Okay, so that's our next step. Now to facilitate this, I'm gonna pull in another package called Laravel Socialite. Cool. And then next, while we're in the browser, let's go to GitHub. And you can see I'm logged in as myself. Let's come down to settings, where is it? Developer settings, and I'm gonna create a new OAuth app. This is for Laracast, and I'll set the home page to match. We'll say this is just a demo. And then we have this authorization callback URL. So think about it. When we redirect the user to GitHub, and when they authorize that our application can access information, where should GitHub return them to? That's what this URL is. So let's set it to our local app here, socialite.test slash auth slash callback. And we'll register an endpoint to match that soon. Okay, great. So now for our GitHub OAuth app, we have a client ID and I can generate a secret as well. Okay, so next we need to store these. And usually you'll do that in a configuration file. If I open up the documentation for Laravel Socialite, you will see that we need to add some configuration items here. So here's the one for GitHub. I'm gonna copy that, switch back, and visit our config slash services file. And we can do this right down here at the bottom. Cool. So now notice it's deferring to these environment variables that we need to define. So we'll do that in our environment file, and we'll do it right here. So the client ID is what we created here. Next, the client secret is also the thing we just generated. Grab that. Finally, the redirect URL. Well, that's the one we set up earlier. Socialite.test slash auth slash, I think it was callback, that's what we did. Uh, we can use a full URL here, or if we use a relative URL, Laravel will automatically turn that into a full URL. Okay, so we're making pretty good progress. Here's the next step. Let's register two new routes now. And we'll say, well, why don't we call this slash auth redirect. When I visit this URL, we want to redirect the user to GitHub so that they can grant permission. So this is what Socialite helps with. I can say return, Socialite, and I'm gonna pull in the facade here. Use a specific driver, because remember, with Socialite, you can log in with Twitter or GitHub or, or something else. We're only using GitHub here. 
and let's redirect. Cool, so now we have our endpoint. The only remaining step here is to update our link here to link to it, slash auth, slash redirect. All right, cool. Let's give it a shot. If we come back and refresh and I click on this link now, it should send me to GitHub. And it does, perfect. So now GitHub saying, hey, this app called Laracast wants to access information about you. And specifically, it wants your email address. Okay, authorize. All right, so we get a 404 here, but we expected this. The important thing is that GitHub is trying to link the user to this endpoint because we told it to. Okay, so the remaining step is to return to our routes file and add another route to respond to that. This time, if we have auth callback, I can now grab our user like so. Okay, and let's do this. Let's die and dump the user and have a look at what we get here. So if I come back and give it a refresh. All right, so notice that Socialite did everything for us here. It read the code, it made the request to GitHub, it compiled the information, and now we have everything we need, which means I could start by creating a user in our database like this. User, but notice we have kind of two users. So why don't we change this to GitHub user to be explicit? So I can say GitHub user, and I can either use a getter that will work for OAuth 1 and OAuth 2 providers, or I can just be direct like this. Okay, so we want the name. Next, I want the email. And what else do we need here? Uh, we could grab the avatar if you want, but I do want the uh, GitHub ID. So that's something we'll need to update our migrations to offer. Next, I want the token, GitHub token. And then finally, I want the refresh token as well. Now, refresh token allows us to make a request to GitHub to update the user's uh, current token in situations where it will expire. So it's a little confusing, but again, the great thing about Socialite is you don't need to know anything about it. I can just say GitHub refresh token and uh, store it here. And yeah, I think that's probably it. So let's do this. Let's visit my migrations table and we're gonna add a couple of these fields. Uh, we'll do it right here. We need the GitHub ID and that can be nullable. Next, we need the GitHub token and then finally the GitHub refresh token as well. Finally, if we do support this sort of registration and sign-in, that means you won't be using a password. So if that's the case, let's make it nullable. All right, cool. So now we have our user. We can sign that user in like usual, and then we can redirect wherever you should go uh, upon sign-in. Redirect, how about to dashboard? Okay, so we might wanna make a couple changes in a few moments, but let's test it out. Now, because we have a fresh application, let's specify a database and I will use SQLite and we'll stick with the defaults. All right, let's create a database, migrate the database and then test it out. Okay, let's register. We're gonna use GitHub oh, and it worked. So notice because we already granted uh, this application access, we didn't have to reauthorize it. But of course, if you need to, you can revoke those tokens. But do notice we signed in with GitHub and we're all set to go here. So if you wanna have a look at our database, here's our users table, and here is the information we got from GitHub. But notice, uh-oh, we're missing some of these fields. And this is because I'll delete that. And this is because by default on your user model, this is what Laravel has uh, for fillable fields. And anything not included here, like a GitHub ID, will be, will be ignored. So to be honest, what I usually do for all applications is I don't set fillable fields. And in fact, I go to my app service provider and I turn off that protection entirely by saying model unguard. I know what I'm doing here, so you don't need to protect me from uh, mass assignment vulnerabilities. Cool. So now when we try to do it again, and if I refresh, I'll have to start over. But if we try it again, I think we'll be all set here. 
use GitHub. So now if we switch back, yeah, there we go. Notice we do have that ID and token. Okay, so we're making really good progress. One thing though, if I log out, what about login? Well, I would also need a login with GitHub button, but it's basically the same thing. So we could swipe it from my register page, go to login instead, all the way at the bottom, and we'll say GitHub login. All right, and it's basically the exact same thing. So now if we log in, aha, it fails. And this is what I wanted to show you. Because we call user create in the callback, well, if you sign in a second time, then it tries to create another <laughs> version of you. And we, of course, don't want that. So let's reformat. What we should do instead is say user, don't blindly create. Let's instead do update or create. So now what should be the information to update the, like what are we checking for? Well, I, I wanna see, do we already have a user with this GitHub ID? And if so, update them. If not, create them. So that'll be our first argument here. And this is how we do it. And I can remove this. Okay, so try to find a user who matches that criteria. If you did, then update it using the latest information here. And if you didn't find one, then create a brand new user. And I think this should do it for us. So if we try one more time, GitHub login, this time no error is thrown. And you know what? I think we're in business.